morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Must Love Yarn podcast. It's Thursday, October 29th. I don't know where October went, but it's almost over. So weird. Uh, and this is a podcast about knitting and yarn and occasionally crocheting stay tuned in the outtakes for some crocheting I've got some spinning to show spinning. Mm -hmm. and the weather in Vermont and all <laughs> kinds of other random things about Vermont and otherwise that uh, Kelly and I decide to talk about mm -hmm. um, and must love yarn is a actual bricks and mortar yarn shop in Shelburne, Vermont. Um, we are open to the public, uh, but we also have curbside pickup or you can order online. We have a very nice um, website. So if you're not local to us and would like to come check out and see what we got going on, um, you can find us at mustloveyarn.com. Uh, you can also find us everywhere out on social media as Must Love Yarn. Uh, so Instagram, Ravelry, and Facebook are probably the most active uh, social media platforms. And I'm Angela. And I'm Kelly. And you can find me out on social media, Instagram, and Ravelry as Junior Bird Kid. And you can find me on Instagram as Kelly O Spins, and you can find me on Ravelry as Kelly Spins. And just as my uh, standard PSA at this time, um, that is my personal Instagram account. So you will very likely see things other than knitting content on that uh, Instagram account. So just be forewarned. There is lots of knitting content, but uh, there's other things as well. So for completely 100% knitting and yarn content, uh, the store Instagram account is the one to follow. Mostly 100%. Mostly 100%. 99.9. Sometimes there's sheep. <laughs> um, and we also have podcast and store mascots because uh, that's that's required. And I forgot to take them out of the bag. We spent like 30 minutes in outtakes and I couldn't be bothered <laughs> to take the meerkats out of the bag. <laughs> we, as you can see, I am a bad meerkat mom and my meerkats are without winter sweaters <laughs> so this is part of our mob of meerkats um, they also have an instagram page which is super sad right now um, this is gage our original original meerkat in the mob um, and this is Swatch and this is Stitch or those two are mixed up because I can't even keep my meerkat kids straight. <laughs> I think you had it right the first time. <laughs> the first time. <laughs> oh no, this was the second one. This is Swatch and this is Stitch. This is the one that came in a box. <laughs> meerkat in a box. <laughs> this is the one that I got on vacation last okay. year. Okay. Um, so they also have their own Instagram page so feel free to follow them for fun shenanigans at times um there is gen some occasionally some back and forth between my personal page and their page uh which i find hysterical i don't know about all of you but <laughs> so, we're glad know. you get enjoyment out of it <laughs> I, you know what it's fun why not you gotta have some fun that's right some fun so we normally like to start our podcast with pick of the week <laughs> and I will just going to move right along <laughs> we did, to one 30 minutes and outtakes and we did not sort that out. <laughs> I am a bad, bad podcaster this week and right. we, well, we had a slight interruption in when we were actually going to podcast and yeah. it kind of threw my whole week off. So. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking a break from the pick of the week. Um, but I think I've seen a lot of new stuff coming into the store. We, well, we had a lot of restocks. We've had okay. gigantic boxes coming in. People are really into knitting sweaters and, and afghans and blankets and things this year. Yes. Yeah, yes. I think, you know, because people are staying closer to home, um, they, they're taking on bigger projects that 
they yep. wouldn't have normally had time for or yep. space for or or whatnot so um yep and we are um speaking of larger projects we are a drop ship store for barocco yep. um so if you are interested in getting yarn for the the glamping cow blanket that uh sharon from security and Casapinka are doing with the uh, Barocco Vintage Chunky. Yeah, um, you can use Barocco Vintage Chunky or Barocco Ultra Wool Chunky. Either mm -hmm. of those will work. So if you want something that's all wool, go for the Ultra Wool Chunky. But if you don't mind having a little bit of nylon and acrylic mixed with the superwash wool, then mm -hmm. you can go for the Vintage Chunky. Um, yep, but yep. They, they did put together some kits that, um, that we can drop ship. Um, but you can also, if you want to pick your own colors, um, mm -hmm. we've got a little bit of the vintage chunky, but we're, we stock more heavily in the ultra wool chunky. Um, and there's some really pretty colors in that. So, yep. yep. So that's, um, that's going on, or we could just make that our pick of the week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can because of the, oh, cause of the drop ship stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yes, we have sometimes some behind the scenes um, restrictions on yeah, things that we can do. We might be able to, I don't know. I have to look at it closer. Stay tuned. <laughs> we can't commit to it today. <laughs> oh, that's... If, it's, if it's ultra well that we have in the store, then we could for sure. Yeah, we can't, we, well, we definitely couldn't do it for the dropship stuff. We could do it for stuff that we have in stock, I think. Okay. We'll just we'll we'll be better organized and we'll come back with the next podcast with an actual pick of the week. That's not just us <laughs> randomly making suggestions and confusing all of you, because yeah. I'm slightly confused at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just move. Yeah. Let's just move on. Moving on. No, moving on. No pick of the week this week. <laughs> Terrible podcasters. Um. All right. We're wearing knits. This we week. are both wearing hand knits, which is super exciting. Kelly, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> so this is kind of like my go-to sweater. It's like a sweatshirt sweater. You know, you get one that you just wear and you put on and I wear this one way too much probably, but that's okay. Um, I, you know, showing my, my hand knit some love. So that's I'm totally cool with that. So this is Little Twigs. It's a Melody Hoffman pattern. And I finished this, what, I don't know, a couple of years ago now. And it is knit out of Wing and a Prayer Farm, All the Single Ladies, which is her Shetland yarn that she does. And it's um, it's one of the ones that spun at Green Mountain Spinnery. It's very similar to, um, if you've worked with Mountain Mohair before, it doesn't have mohair in it, but it's a it's a spin that's very similar to that. Um, and like a lot of wool, it pills a little bit, but, um, it's a, it's a really, I don't know. I, I just took my, um, my gleaner to it and clean it up every once in a while. And, and it's as good as new and yeah, I like it. I wear it and it probably pills because I wear it like all of the time. Bless you. <laughs> That was a good catch on muting. <laughs> I know. Managed to mute that before I blew everybody's eardrums out. <sighs> Yay. Awesome. So, so what are you wearing? So today? I Sorry. am wearing my Ingalls sweater. So this is a Caitlin Hunter pattern um, that came out a few years ago, I think at this point. So it's a DK weight. Um, I knit mine out of Legacy Fiber Arts. Um, so this, the main color is their parchment colorway. And then the gray is their, um, it's whatever the lighter gray is. They have a couple of different. Um, they had gray gardens gray and. Gray gardens is, I think, the darker one. Yeah. It's um, pewter. Yeah. It's pewter. So it's um, the snowflake por portion is uh, the DK held with a um, skein of or a strand of mohair. So it's a little bit fuzzy. You can't really see on the um, on the screen, but actually, if you touch it, you can feel that the snowflakes are soft and fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is a very um, 
intended to be a very oversized sweater. I think I knit the medium because um, I didn't want the like the super crazy baggy. This is actually baggy enough for me. Um, so and it was I was lucky enough to be able to try on somebody's who was like, you might want to size it down. And I was like, what are you talking about? And they're That's like, right. try it at the retreat. At the right? retreat. Yeah. 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 They were like, here, try this on. I tried it on. I was like, this fits perfectly. They were like, that one's a small. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, that can't be true. Um, so just, you know, if you're going to make this, be aware that it is intended to be a super baggy um, sweater. Into it. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't want that, then um, you may need to size down. I normally make either a large or extra large size usually, um, and I size down to a medium. So, but I also have socks on. I'm, I'm back. I'm back to doing my feet thing. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so this is a sock tube. Again, today is like Legacy Fiber Arts Day. Um, <laughs> That's so, right, yeah, because that was what uh, Kirk and Kirk and like a bright green. Bright green. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so Kelly, that was one of the tubes that Kelly cranked for me out of Kirk, the Kirk colorway, um, and they had paired. It was one of their sock uh, kits that they generally have. They you know rotate the colors. Um, with they had sort of some that. pretty ones this fall. I kept like <sighs> hovering to buy one, and then by the time I went back, they'd be sold out. And I was like, "It's probably for the best." It's a sign, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so they had those bright green um, contrast colors, and I mean, their yarn, the speckled yarn that they do, is amazing in the sock tubes. Like it just yeah. it knits up in those tubes just spectacularly. So. It looks like confetti falling. I mean, because mm -hmm. it's like plates so well. It's not, you don't get a lot of, you don't get pooling in it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really lovely. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's amazing. Um, so, so I got those. Those are my, what's on, what I'm wearing today. And I have two finished objects. Look at and you go. Two finished objects and three mostly finished objects and that one actually will make more sense when I talk about them. <laughs> mostly finished. Mostly finished. <laughs> let's start with FOs okay I was super close when we podcast last and I am happy to report I finished the in stillness drop sweater look at that that's beautiful oh thank you this is such a fun pattern Alicia Plummer's yeah. patterns are so well written and so yeah. nice um, I think I just, I had sleeves to do last time. Um, so finished the sleeves and got the neck band. I have not blocked it. I did wear it without blocking it and it was fine. Wow, it, it looks like you blocked it. It looks, it's, the yarn is like Probably because I wore it. <laughs> <laughs> My yeah. body blocked it. <laughs> um, it probably could use a good block just to get sort of the knitting oil, hand oils and stuff off of it. Um, this yarn is uh, Gail's Art. Gail's Art. Gail's, yes. Mm -hmm. Her full figured gal um, skeins. It's a DK weight. Um, so it comes in like big skeins. It's like 580 yards um, per skein in the Morticia colorway. So it's reading really dark, kind of grapey blue on the screen. In person, it's a little bit of a lighter color. It's reading pretty plummy. Okay. Okay. On my screen. It must be my playback screen because it's definitely more of sort of a plummy, yeah. plummy color. So, okay, good. My screen just, it's my screen. It's not me. It's not you, it's me. Well, and on uh, everybody else's screen, it may it look be. completely different though. So. Completely different. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this one's this one's done and now wearable. So I have another DK weight pullover sweater. And I can see that this one is gonna be another one of those like go-to, just wear it all the mm -hmm. time, like super just comfortable, um, goes with lots of stuff. Um, yeah. So, and a purple sweater, what, how could that be? How could that be right in my wheelhouse? Well, you know, when you have like a signature color, then everything works with it in your wardrobe. Oh, so, you know. I know. Um, all right, so the other thing I finished, 
Oh, that's pretty. Was the nicely. secret handshake cowl. That's nice. Thank you. This also has not been blocked. That I can tell. Yeah, you can tell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. The sweater, I really couldn't, but that that because it has some a lot of different pattern stitches like, in it. It's easier to see that. This one right here is pucker. Mm -hmm. It's 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 puckered where because it's a lace pattern. So when it blocks, that will relax yep. out. But yep. So this is um, I I used a lot of just like random leftovers. I went stash diving for this particular um, one. Uh, so this was fun. There's only four clues in the secret handshake. I completely misspoke when we podcast last because I thought that there was more than four. There's six in the scarf, the shawl scarf, and four, there was four in the cowl. Okay. So when we podcast last, I only had one more clue to make it through. So, so that's done. And that was fun. Um, and now for my three partially finished objects. And now for my magic trick. <laughs> now for my magic trick. So when we podcast last, I had just cast on four Christmas ornaments. I believe one of them. Yeah. Uh, the RBG yeah ornament yeah. i'm now up to three mm. Mm. where did you go i say they're partially finished because the knitting part's done i still have to do the white crocheted collar oh. out of crochet thread hey. so my current plan is to knit a whole bunch of these and then practice with a bigger yarn mm -hmm. So I can figure out how the stitches are supposed to go and then try to like knock out the smaller crochet thread ones like all at once. Once I get the figure out how it works, the pattern down. Cool. So I'm going to do a bunch of these first and then fiddle with the crochet. And if all else fails, I will come crying to Kelly, begging her to do the crochet part for me, <laughs> which I have done before. <laughs> but I'm gonna try it I'm gonna try to do it on my own first excellent so yeah so I'm up to three three finished Christmas balls cool. only like seven more to go <laughs> or eight <laughs> you know you know they're pretty quick I can knock one of those out in like an evening that's not too bad then yeah yep 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 um <laughs> So what do you got? What have you been working on? So I have like four things I can talk about today. Awesome. Some of these you've seen before, some of them you haven't. Nice. So I don't know if I I don't know if I showed this last time, but I did finish the body on Spencer. Ooh. So I, I don't think you had. I think you were close to yeah. doing something. With yeah. It. So it's it's kind of hard to tell. So because you end up, um, you do raglan sleeves and then you sew them in. So I haven't done the sleeves yet. Um, so this is the left front here and then the sleeve opening and then this is the back. Okay. And then the sleeve opening and then the other front here. And okay. the fronts are so skinny because you actually pick up stitches and do this really big, like, I think it's like seven or nine inch wide band that goes up and around. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why it's, you know, the front is kind of narrow. Nice. So, but the body is done. Um, so now I've got to do the sleeves and then the sleeves get set in and then you can pick up for the band. So okay. coming along and it's really super soft. Nice. And yeah. I love the way it's doing like a kind of striping. Pattern yeah. That it's looks kind of striping, but it's, um, but the, the mohair softens it a little bit too. Mm -hmm. So nice so that's spencer so it's coming along um i also talked about i think i showed one of the sleeves i'm doing the rindy jane sweater by ellen mason 
And this is out of um, Wing and a Prayer Farm, Hayden and Olivia yarn. And this is yarn that we had at the store, this color. <laughs> nobody bought it, so Kelly did. <laughs> nobody bought it. We had it in the store for quite a while and nobody bought it. And um, so I was like, well, I'm going to buy it. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is from like, I think two seasons ago that she did this one. Um, and we only had six skeins in the store. I knew it wasn't going to be enough to do a sweater. So Tammy had a new batch this year of Hayden and Olivia yarn. And it's much darker, which was perfect because I'd rather go with something completely different. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going to work really well. And that was this color. That's amazing. So I'm going to do the main body of the sweater in this lighter color because I have six skeins of that. And then I got a couple skeins of this. So from kind of like here up, I'm going to transition. I'm going to do some sort of motif or something and then transition up into the darker color for the top. Cool. So, but I had, I think I had one sleeve done last time and I'm almost done with the second sleeve. And then I'm going to start on the body. Um, the patterns are written so that you do the body up to the underarm. Then you set that aside and do the sleeves. But I always just get the sleeves done first because then when you get the body done, you're like, oh, my sleeves are done. All I have to do is just up to the top and you're done, yeah. you know? So, um, so I, I do that as like a little, you know, incentive reward because then I'm, I'm much better about, you know, getting everything else done if I don't have to stop and then do the sleeves. Yeah. So this one is, is almost there. I think I only have a couple more increases to do. Um, you do the increases every eight rows. You can see them kind of there. Yeah. Um, so this is, um, it's an alpaca wool blend. So it's really nice and soft. Uh, and I think it's going to be a, a really nice sweater for the winter. Um, so that's, I've been kind of picking away at that and getting that done. Let me make my pile over here so I don't get too tangled up. Um, so for the descent along, I decided I was going to do the crochet cowl, the mm. descent cowl in the crochet version. And I've got it about 85, maybe 90% done. And I was just, I'm getting, I'm probably going to run out of yarn. And so that's part of the reason I'm, I'm thinking I'm just going to pull this one out. But it's also because um, I used a farm yarn. And they're a little crunchier and they don't have as much drape as like a super or something that has a little silk in it or something like that. So it's going to be like a really more substantial stiff cowl. And I'm, I don't know that I'm going to love that for, for this. Um, I mean, it's really pretty, but if I'm not going to wear it, then, you know, yep. you know how it goes. Yep. So Ooh, those colors though. Isn't that pretty? That is gorgeous. So this is Wing and a Prayer Farm, and this is Thelma and Louise. There's a Wing and a Prayer that Farm theme going on here. My sweater, <laughs> my windy chain, this. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it's really pretty, but I'm, you know what I'm thinking I'm going to do? Um, that seventh floor yarn, Yak, is a mm. DK. Yeah, I'm thinking about that because that's yak and silk and and wool. And so drapey, it will have amazing drape to it. So I think I'm going to pick two colors in that and do the cowl in that. Gorgeous. Yeah, I know. I I was thinking about it and I was like, this is so pretty, but it's you can see. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not that that stiff and rigid, but it's more more so than I think I would like it to be. Right. So and since you know, that's all I have for yarn left. And I have, I think I've got something like 10 or so more rows to do rounds to do. I'm just not going to have enough. And so I'll, I'll do something different with this yarn. Um, but yeah, so, you know, it was time yeah. to, it's crochet. I mean, I sat down, I think I did this in like an afternoon. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. You're fast. Yeah, crochet is is, is super fast. You're so fast. my crochet um, is not that fast. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but you know, I've been doing it for a while. So I mean that's the thing with crochet. It, you, I was like, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have my descent cow project. I'm gonna have I'm a gonna, finished object. I'm actually gonna do a cow and I'm gonna have a finished project for my cow. And then I was like, oh, I'm gonna run out of yard. <laughs> 
so I thought I would, I wanted to save this and show this to you guys before I actually pulled it out. Yeah. It's going to get pulled out soon. Nice. But, yeah. So anyway, that's that. And then I have one more thing to show you, and this is spinning. And you guys, I think I, I think I showed everybody the, um, the Tilly fiber that I had been preparing. Um, mm -hmm. So Tilly is one of my little Shetland ewes and she's teeny tiny. And I actually sheared her myself um, a couple months ago um, just with hand shears. And cause she's so tiny that I wanted to make sure I sheared her early enough. She would have a nice fluff growing in before it got really cold. And with hand shears, you can leave, you can leave it a little bit longer on them. So um, her fleece was only about like, I don't know, just over one and a quarter pounds. It was a little fleece. And because she's itty bitty. She is so tiny. She is like just this little, and she, oh my God, she comes up and she would basically crawl right into your lap and snuggle with you. She's like a little oh. dog. She's just, yeah, she's adorable. Is she one of the ones, did she come from Peter's home or does yeah. she? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. So not another way in a prayer link here. <laughs> But you have some of her sheep too. So I have, I do. I have three of hers and my ram, um, Pele. If for anybody that knows Wing in a Prayer Farm, he, Pele was a little star of a lot of her videos because he is so friendly. He would come up and he just wanted so much attention. So, and he's still very friendly. Although now that it's getting to be breeding season, he's getting to be a little friendly of a different type. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so no, he's a good boy though. And, um, nice. and yeah, so, and two of his sisters are actually at um, Isabella Rossellini's farm down oh, on cool. Long Island. Well, there were three of them there. They were, he was a triplet, um, but his sisters, yeah, his sisters went to live on Isabella Rossellini's farm, which nice. is going to be an educational farm. And so oh, she's, cool. she's getting heritage breed sheep um, to, um, to kind of teach about the different breeds and and the wool types and things like that which is really i think is so cool she's working with the livestock conservancy nice as she's as she's bringing these breeds in but anyway so i always made this joke about him being being jealous about his sister's going to live, <laughs> live on her farm so anyway um tilly is um is one of my little my little shetland ewes and i um i sh so this is like all, all in. I like sheared her. I washed her fleece. I carded it, and then I spun it. So I have some of her. Oh wow! Yeah, that's gorgeous. So it's this really lovely kind of dark charcoal. It's almost it's almost the same as my sweater. Um, so it um it worked well. It I actually spun a quite balanced yarn and um, nice. I was pretty pleased with it considering I haven't done tons of spinning um, in a while, but um, so it's a little hard to see. Oh, I don't know if it'll focus on it or not, but anyway. That's awesome. Yeah, so I have um, my first gain of yarn from my sheep and my husband nice. has already claimed it. he wants a hat from it <laughs> nice what um what weight did you spend it at um it's pretty much a worsted weight um i think it'll um i i typically um spin woolen spun so i i draw i do a long draw or a semi um or somewhat supported long draw um partially supported um so it's going to be a little fluffier. So when I knit with it, it'll kind of puff up a little bit. Yep. Um, so, but it's basically, yeah, it's basically like a worsted. Nice. And I left, um, when I washed my fleeces, I left quite a bit of the lanolin in. So it was so great when I was spinning with it. My hands were, mm. were so smooth, but um, then when I, I washed it to um, set the twist and everything, <laughs> there was still some, um, some dirt and lanolin coming out of it but that's okay. Yes. I don't mind. So yeah, I was pretty nice. proud of that. And awesome. it was, was kind of like, I like taking it from like every step along the way, you know? Yeah, no, that's so cool. Yeah. So I'm going to keep, um, I just got this really cool drum carter so that I can 
um, process a lot of them. I haven't even taken out of the box yet. I haven't had time to. Um, so I'm going to process the rest of my fleeces um, throughout nice. the winter and um, put some yarn for sale up on the old Fernbridge farm page and nice. probably some roving and stuff too. So cool. Yeah. Fun. My yarn went rolling away, the yarn I'm knitting with. <laughs> Thanks. So I started a couple of new projects once I got the sweater and the cowl finished. Um, so this is one of my recent cast on cast ons. That's so um, Thank you. This is uh, Woolens and Nosh. Uh, she's a local to us dyer um, who does this fantastic striped yarn. So this is her Fallen Leaves colorway. It's on the DK for DK base. Um, she may still have a pre-order listing up. Um, so just check her website. I think when I was out there last week, uh, it was it was still up. Um, so, and this is going to be a hat. This is a skein of uh, yarn that I already had. So uh, sometimes she will sell coordinating um, solids, but that this was um, something that I added myself. Uh, so it's just going to be hat Christmas gift. Um, and it's just, it's gorgeous sort of fall, fall colors. That's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah her, her, her yarns are so beautiful. She does a great job. And Hint, hint, we're going to have some of your her yarns coming into the store in the next week or two. So we'll talk about those when they come in. We're not going to give away any, you know. Stay tuned because we'll be able to show them off. They're going to be awesome. Oh, they're going to be so lovely. So mm -hmm. awesome. So excited. I'm going to buy them all. No, I won't. Right. <laughs> It's clearly there's a yarn, yarn shortage at my house. <laughs> yeah, I was showing Ange my, my terribly <laughs> messy craft bunker because I um, moved it to a different room in my house that's a bigger room, which I'm super excited about. But at the same time, like, it's a complete disaster. Now you have to organize it all. I've got so much organizing to do, but it's good. Like, I love it's when you can be organized, it just makes things so much easier. Yeah. So I'm yep. looking, I'm, I'm kind of dreading and looking forward to it all at the same time. It's good and bad. I did yeah. something recently similar, I think this past weekend, or maybe it was the weekend before I had to get some sections of my uh, yarn stash under control. I mean, it was mm -hmm. just in and I needed to clean some stuff out and I needed to throw some things away and just get things reorganized. Um, so I, and I found a lot of little treasures that I forgot that I had or I um, pieces of things like an end of a skein that I hadn't used in a project. And I was like, oh my gosh, that would be perfect for, you know, fill in the blank. Um, yeah. So yeah, so it, but it's mess. It's still half of a mess because I have some other things that need to get cleared out as well but um we're, we're getting we're getting there so all right so I cast this on I also cast on another handshake I like enjoyed the first one so much I had to do a second one nice. actually I ordered a kit from CC so oh, that's I, right. I remember you saying that you had really to. had to like <laughs> yeah. I saw that kit I love that I thought that was it, so lovely yeah so she had a kit that had similar <laughs> kind of similar colors to the one that I did and I was eyeballing that one too and I was like you just you need to go into your stash and just yeah. create that stop it already but these are colors that I don't normally have in my stash I mean definitely the tealy one but this lighter mint mm -hmm. and this more rust color um you know those are ones that I don't normally have and the nice thing about this project is all four of these yarns are the same right so the other one I did, they're different yarns, they're different bases, they're different companies, like they are slightly different sizes. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, it, it impacts, it's not super noticeable, but it, it's a little noticeable when you're knitting with it. These are all the same size. Um, so it should, this one should be a little bit more consistent in sort of the pattern and yeah. size. Yeah. 
Um, so I have just finished clue one. So I guess I am 25% done with this, <laughs> this cowl. Nice. Yeah. That's pretty. That's going to be really lovely. Thank you. I love these colors. They are so just gorgeous together. And I have to um, give a little, little plug here. This is my little um, stitch marker guy. It's a little yeah. dragon from Wee Ones. I have a Wee One on mine too. So um, is that last year, it was either last year or the year before I bought a set of her Halloween ones, which was a pumpkin, a bat, a cat, and something else. Mm -hmm. I've got the other ones upstairs, but I have the, I have the little cat on. It's, oh, nice. It's hard to see because he's so Because he's black. I can see his eyes glowing. You can see his eyes, yeah. <laughs> I, and I have on this one, actually, this one has a um, wee ones as well, which is also there. You can see it. I first thought it was a skunk. It's actually a honey badger. Honey badger. Yeah. Honey badger. <laughs> uh, which seems sort of fitting. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, making, making use of all of these tons and tons of stitch markers mm -hmm. that I have. I have some really fun ones and I always forget about them and I've got them like tucked away in this little secure pouch because I don't want them to get lost or broken or whatever. I'm like, you just need to use these. I know. I, I um, ordered some stuff from her at Minor still currently in the box that they <laughs> were shipped in um, which is also a good way to protect them but I ordered some of hers from uh, the Vermont Sheep and Wool uh -huh. weekend um, so I got these little guys they're little let's see if you can see them in the plastic they're little hedgehoggies with like winter stuff so some of them have hats and some of them have mittens and some of them have like little socks winter That's socks so they're like cute. headbands earmuffs um so they're her things are they're so cute the hedgehogs are so adorable she had like halloween hedgehogs and i almost got those and i was like you know <laughs> let's get the winter hedgehogs because then you can at least like use them for a longer period of time without feeling like you're not being seasonal but you can do halloween year round that's yeah Her stuff's so cute. It is cute. She's got some really cute stuff. She's really nice. Too. Yes, she yeah. is. Abigail has oh, commandeered my um, rainbow unicorn ones. So those Aww. are gone. <laughs> she has them in her own. Um, I bought her one of those little like notions boxes mm -hmm. that flip open and stuff. And so she has, she keeps them in there. <laughs> along with some uh mini mouse buttons and some oh. other little treasures that she has nice. so that's cute yeah it's like her little treasure box it is it is yep uh so those are pretty much these are pretty much the two the only two things i have going right now um this is more of sort of just my grab and go project because it's just miles and miles of stocking at so it's perfect for podcasting or yeah being on a conference call or you know any any of those kinds of things so yeah and I think um when I get these two things done I think I have one more hat to make for holiday giving and then a pair of mittens and that might be it I'm not doing I'm not going super crazy I have some socks that I've already done that are going to be gifts from the sock tubes nice. um, though I may change my mind when I pick up the next set from mm -hmm. Kelly because there may be new tubes in there then I'm like oh I'm going to make those for this person um, mm -hmm. I have that one tube I have to fix where I put the heel in the wrong place on one of the socks <laughs> <laughs> I and I the sock is total the socks are totally in timeout but I think where I'm gonna end up is that those socks are going to be for me and I don't care <laughs> so, yeah, you know it's is where I think that's gonna end <laughs> mm -hmm. 
can't believe I misplaced a heel on a sock that had like stripes, striping pad. Like it wasn't like it was this speckly yarn with like legacy fiber arts where you're like, okay, I could see how you could misplace a heel because you can't like count down the number of stripes where the heel needs to go. I, I, you know, I, I don't have any explanation for what happened. Actually, I might have an explanation. <laughs> we don't need to go there. C name of purple sweater. <laughs> uh-huh. There may be some more of that with your advent wine calendar. <laughs> there there might be. Last weekend I was last Friday night I was finishing up the Halloween masks while having some wine. So the sewing actually isn't bad. I should maybe I should sew like that more often. <laughs> like Going I pay with alcoholic beverage okay yeah knitting? like I pay better attention because I know I've had alcoholic beverage I don't know what was going on but the sewing is actually quite good for me <laughs> so oh. I'd have stumbled onto something here um up next are Christmas masks I may have gone on a little bit of a Etsy holiday winter fabric buying palooza <laughs> including some Christmas gnomes <laughs> that uh, I had to order from the Ukraine. So I, oh. I'm not sure what's going on right now at my house with the fabric situation. <laughs> but it's... Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Excellent. So I may have some uh, some holiday masks available for you if you're interested as well. Okay. <laughs> you like the Halloween one because it'll be the same kind of style. But okay. yep. yep, yep. So I need to stay off Etsy. I've been pretty good about staying off Instagram lately for many reasons, <laughs> most of which are you do not need any more yarn. Um, but I need to do the same with Etsy now. So. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So, um, we've got some cow, cow cows going. Yep. Um, and as I mentioned last week, we have just extended, we, and by we, I mean me, um, <clears throat> have just extended the deadlines for all of the existing cows and new cows to the end of the year. And then we'll just do a big prize palooza, maybe as like our New Year's Eve episode or something along those lines. Um, so any of the ones that are already going, will just continue, um, the new, the newest one that started is the descent along, uh, they don't believe I've actually put up a thread on Ravelry unless somebody else did it for me, um, cause I'm a giant slacker. So I put a bundle together, so I feel proud of myself for that, but then did not create the, the thread. So I will try to go do that before this podcast loads because I'm sure people would love to start chattering and sharing what they're knitting and I've just can you get my act together here <laughs> um so we have that the descent along going we have our normal warmth with yarn cow which I also need to create a new um 2020 thread for that and uh, then we have a scrap along that's still going and I feel like there's one more that I just am drawing a blank on uh, so any of the ones that are still open that haven't been locked the retro along to get locked and I still have not pulled prizes for it we'll get to it we may include it in just the prize palooza at the end of the year um, so any of the ones that haven't been locked yet we're extending to the end of the year so he got some more time to participate. Oh, there was a summer t-shirt cowl. Mm -hmm. So keep that one going. <laughs> so for, <laughs> you got a little bit longer to finish your t-shirt if you haven't done it yet. And you can wear it next summer right. or under a sweatshirt or something. Mm -hmm. Long or sleeve shirt. Wear a long sleeve shirt under it. Or yep. Something. Yep. So we'll extend that one too. <laughs> Um, we have, uh, the, uh, Seasons of Vermont box for October released a couple weeks ago, and there are still, 
uh, some boxes available. So ha if you want to check that out, um, it's a really uh, gorgeous mild yarn from mm -hmm. Hampton Fiber Mills. Um, it comes in different colors, so you can choose um, which color you want. There's some really awesome uh, a bag and other goodies that uh, go with this box. Mm -hmm. um, so go check that out. I think we still have um, one from the summer with or a few with a su the summer one uh, that has uh, fiber stash yarn in it. Mm -hmm. uh, that one's gorgeous. If somebody doesn't buy it, I'm just going to go buy it for the yarn. So please help me not buy more yarn. <laughs> go check out that box. Yeah, and there's, there's, a, there's a couple. One wing and a prayer farm one so. from like June. Yeah, that one's really great. Yeah, Maybe I'll buy that one. Is that beautiful blue, gorgeous yarn? Mm -hmm. So gorgeous. So save Kelly and I <laughs> from buying more yarn and go check out those boxes. That's right. We're counting on you. Um, I hosted <laughs> knit group virtual knit group last night, and yeah, one of our um, participants had. Um, the fingerless mitt version knit up of Jen's pattern from the most recent box. Whoa. They're so cute. Did she did she buy the box? Mm -hmm. so did she have it with the Hampton yeah. fiber? No. Yeah. Oh, I bet that looked awesome. Yeah, it was really pretty. Nice. Nice. Yeah, that was super cool yarn. Yeah. I was actually I was eyeballing the yarn as it was like laid out and I was like, you know, know, if you got one of each of those skeins, that would make a really cool like kind of fady marled sweater of some sort. And I was like, walk away, walk away. I know. <laughs> um, and I think we are scheduled. There's one more that's going to come out. Um, we're normally would come out in the middle of December, but I think we're having some conversations about whether it's going to release when the release date's going to be. So mm -hmm. stay tuned for that one. That one's going to be a fun yeah, one too. Yeah, because we already have a lot of the pieces for it, so um, we may yep. have that one go a little earlier, yep. or at least the, the beginning of December, so that if yep. people want to get it for right. holiday gifts or whatever. I think there was some chat talk and I don't think that we settled so please don't hold us to this this is my little disclaimer um, about whether we might release a small pre-order for that one over um, the Thanksgiving right. holiday, small business Saturday um, weekend uh, so that you could order it so as soon as we had all of the components it would ship and you may be able to get it sooner than the bigger release um, or guarantee sort of the slot that you're going to have one. Um, yep. We will probably know more this weekend. We are scheduled, I believe, to have a business meeting. Um, and so those are some fine details we need to hash out about where things are now that I think we're a little bit closer and may have a better sense of when everything's going to be here and ready. Um, yeah. So keep an eye out for that because that one's going to be a super fun one. And yeah. Kelly and I might throw all of you down to get one because um, it's that awesome of a box. Yeah, Let's it go. is. It's, it's kind of neat. It's a little bit different than some of our other ones we've done. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. It's cool. So that's all the teas you're going to get on that for now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know, if Kelly and I are both threatening to throw down to get one, that it's awesome. Super awesome. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want it. Don't miss it. Set your alarm clock for some date in the future that we don't know yet. <laughs> Get right on that. Get right on that. Set that alarm. <laughs> we'll give you some warning. We'll, we'll, we should probably have those details worked out by the time we podcast next would be my guess. Yeah. So, so we'll, uh, we'll keep you in the loop. Keep Ali in the loop. We have we don't have the information ourselves to keep you in the loop right now, or we would do it. So um I don't know if I have anything else. I'm working on a couple of things for maybe over small business Saturday weekend. Um I can't believe I just called it that. The Thanksgiving weekend. <laughs> American Thanksgiving weekend. Uh so there may be some online activities happening on like the Friday, Saturday, Sunday-ish um, type thing. So come, just keep an eye on our social media. As soon as I get, again, as soon as I get the details worked out, like we'll be making announcements here. You'll see it on social media, probably on our email. I'll send out email newsletter about, you know, upcoming 
things. And so if you're not on our email list, um, you should join, you should get on it because that's mm -hmm. where a lot of the um, in-store activities are shared. Yep, um, you can sign so. up on our website. Yep. Either at the very bottom of the page or at the very upper left-hand corner, there's yep. a little sign up box. Excellent. Excellent. Because I just had, I just had a, I just had a brain epiphany for something we could do, but cool. not going to talk about it here. You're just going to have to wait. I will talk to Kelly about it when we stop recording. <laughs> so it's probably time for us to stop recording. Yeah, because there's an awful lot of, of outtake pre-tape that of we did. Lots of chatter. Lots and lots of chatter. So, all right. Well, till we are able to see you again, um, one of these days we may be able to get back to weekly podcasting. Um, but uh, for now, I think we may be sticking with the every other week format. I have uh, definitely some timing challenges at my end um, that do not allow me to uh, devote the time on a weekly basis at this point. But that may change a little bit or we'll figure something else out. But for now, I think we'll at least try to get you every other week. So, um, all right, so till next time. Mm -hmm. um, we will we'll see you soon okay. all right bye and we're recording <laughs> and we stopped talking after we no. start recording I know. there's some like weird atmospheric thing going on um i've been very headachey like mm. the last week or so yeah well we've had like crazy pressure changes and that um that hurricane that mm -hmm. went through that was really bad in um down in louisiana um it's it's cruising that's actually what's bringing us the snow tonight oh okay it's moving so incredibly fast so um that's what's that's what's coming through and pushing a bunch of moisture through got it got it I, yeah, I just, it's been weird. I mean, it's not an unco uncommon phenomenon for me to get them yeah. like once a month kind of thing, but it's yeah. been weird. I mean, there was some weird air inversion thing happening at my house. Mm -hmm. Like when I left, like the whole like outside and yard was like smoke from the wood stove. Like there's some sort of inversion, something um, happening. So it's weird. Yeah. Weird. Weird, weird. And then, you know, you add on top of it just like what feels like endless hours of being in front of a computer and in front of a screen. And it's like. Yeah. My poor husband yesterday had like seven and a half hours of meetings or something ridiculous. <laughs> does, he, does he have blue screen glasses? He does. I don't know okay. if he was wearing them or not, but he does. I mean, his, I totally his glasses have that have it in them. Okay. I mean, I totally notice it if I'm not wearing, like, even just into this short period of time, like 30 minutes or less. Like, I'll be like, why are my eye? Oh, right. I don't I have my glasses on. I know. It's wild, isn't it? How much yeah. it makes a difference. Yeah. Yep. 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 I'm all ready for Halloween, I think. Look, I even have fancy. Oh, look at you go. Fancy Halloween masks. I thought about getting a fancy Halloween mask. And are I, you guys doing I, anything? Are you going to be able to go trick or treating or do any of the. We, I have one more of these at my office. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I could hey. also drop it off at the store. Well, I have all of your sock tubes all at the I'll store. I'll trade you sock tubes for <laughs> a fun Halloween mask. Okay. <laughs> That's. That's good because I'm going to be at the store on Saturday during Halloween, so it'll be fun to be festive. Mm -hmm. um, are we doing anything for Halloween? I think um, I think we're going to go to a local trunk or treat that they do at um, one of the churches. It's usually relatively low key. I know they've moved the location so they can spread the cars out yeah. more. Um, all of the 
require masks, social distancing, like don't crowd kind of is holding and it's we're a small enough community like I'm not overly worried or if we go up and it's super crowded we'll just turn around and go home like it's yeah I mean I've got we're I've got sort of I need to get some more supplies because I'm not quite there yet but I think we're just going to do some fun things at the house which is what we've been kind of tending to do for like birthdays and other things um I got one of those uh Nordic wear skull cake pans or oh. you know little mm. mini cake pans that I don't know if you've seen them circulated on like social media or anything no. um, but there's a recipe to make like stuffed pizzas oh. with them and so with the between like the tomato sauce and the cheese and it getting baked in the um pizza dough like it tends to kind of look like creepy and like you know bloody what a skeleton <laughs> um kind of thing and you know what even if it's an epic fail like it's <laughs> stuffed pizza so you right. know how bad can it be <laughs> it's not gonna be terrible um so we're, I think you know we'll I'll make some food that's like that um I was looking at recipes last night for some you know, fun like Halloween drinks for the kids because they like their fancy drinks. They get very upset if I'm making fancy drinks for myself and I don't make them one. That's so funny. I know. I know. So I've had to really um, up my game a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I I will post pictures of the fancy drinks for this weekend because I've been in the process of making black vodka at my house for oh. a grown up Halloween drink. Yep. Uh, and I just ordered some like bright green apple syrup for some drinks for the kids. Cool. So, yeah. So keep an eye on Instagram this <laughs> weekend. <laughs> uh, so yeah, just, you know, little fun things that don't, you know, just a little bit of effort. Like I think we'll make it fun for, for everybody. Yeah, exactly. Yep. We did pumpkins last weekend and, you know, roasted up a bunch of pumpkin seeds. Nice. Yeah. So it was fun. Fun times. Let's see what else has been going on. Not a huge amount. We've been kind of just hanging. A lot of the fall stuff is wrapping up. So like soccer's done. Um, scouts are, have kind of mellowed out a little bit the popcorn sales over so you know doing uh williams doing uh contactless football i know it sounds weird non-contact football so it's yeah. more just like running drills and um things like that as opposed to like actual tackle tackle kind of stuff yeah. um so just you know it gets them out running around and yeah that's good yep because I, I, I am going to be surprised if there's any sort of like winter, any winter indoor sports stuff happening, um, like well, they, basketball or anything. So, well, even like um, they had that, that breakout associated with that hockey rink. Yeah. Here, too. Yep. So. Yep. I mean, the indoor stuff is tough. Yeah. Um, you know, outdoor, even, you know, I don't know. It's, it's it's challenging we'll just have to find other stuff like hopefully we get a lot of snow and then we can go snowshoeing and you know do yeah. stuff like that we skate too because there's a lot of like open rinks around here too we go down the road and pond oh, that's skate that's right that's right you guys have that pond that you go to yeah I mean, literally, if you can skate on pond ice, you can skate on anything. <laughs> no, <laughs> I am terrible. I did not grow up skating. <laughs> I did not live in a climate where you could just literally go down to the pond and skate. So I have like no skills. And last year I refused to skate because I was like, if I hurt myself and I'm out of commission, like work-wise, yeah. like this is not, this can't happen. This year, I everybody's remote. So if I hurt myself, I just remote work for however yeah, long. You haven't had court, so you haven't had to. And, and the court that is happening is uh, via virtual platforms. So very few things are happening oh. in person. Huh. So, but yeah, no, I haven't haven't had court. My practice area has completely stayed, um, and is not. Uh, so I don't have that. So I will have to 
dust off and bust out the ice skates. I'm not gonna have any excuse this winter. <laughs> one winter, one winter I was pregnant, you know, one winter I was like, I had to have a newborn, like you guys go, it's too cold for Abigail to be out. <laughs> that's funny last winter I was like I can't get hurt like I literally I don't have anybody else if I hurt myself yeah. I'm in big trouble so I used to skate more when I was a kid and I haven't it's been off quite a while since I have so yeah but, but yeah my did. kids yeah. like it there was always like a lot of the towns around here have have outdoor just like public skating rinks that they get donations to do and then yeah um and growing up we that's we had one in the town that I was in but we also sometimes would just find like flooded fields mm -hmm. where where they had flooded and then frozen oh yeah we'd just go skating them you know like dodging corn stalks every once in a while one would be poking off. oh yeah I mean literally if you can skate on that like that's like that's yeah so similar to like pond ice like it's mm -hmm. it's been frozen it's thawed it's frozen it's thawed like sometimes you're skating over a layer of water that's, <laughs> but yeah it's fun times it is fun fun times so good to know i'm um like 75 to 80 percent done with my christmas shopping are you i yeah. actually i've got I've got most, uh, I've got a good percentage of mine done, at least half. I wanted yeah. to get it done early. There's a couple of local stores I'm going to try to hit before hopefully, thing, I'm hoping things don't close down, but I just, I don't realistically see that not happening. Right. So I want to try to get it done now before that does happen. Cause I do try to shop as local as possible. And I don't, yeah. you know, I did there were a few small things that I ordered online from a few smaller businesses, but, um, but yeah, yeah. it's going to be a challenge this year. And I want to make sure I, I have stuff before. Well, and that's like where, that's where we were. I was like, look, I, we got to get, start taking care of some of this stuff and just mm -hmm. have it at the house. I, you know, most of my family's not here, so I need to ship stuff. Yeah. And I just want to make sure that it's taken care of. I mean, we, we went through this with two kids birthdays in June where we weren't sure, if, are we going to be able to get stuff? Is it going to get here in time? Are we even going to be able to do this? And I'm like, I'm just, I'm not taking, taking the risk. Like it's, Let's just take care of it now. Then we have it. And then I can like spend the month of December just relaxing and like yeah. making cookies or exactly. making treats or, you know, not stressing out about holiday shopping. Just yeah. And that's, it. you know, stuff that I usually don't have time to do. And I hope that I have a little bit of time to do some of that this year, yeah. like decorating and baking and just, you know, enjoying the holidays, mm -hmm. you know, and, and having it feel a little bit like you did when you were a kid where it was just like pure joy, you know? Right. Besides, if I get all this stuff taken care of and I get all of my gift knitting done, mm -hmm. um, I have that advent calendar I need to like right. bust into. That's right. <laughs> my motivation right now. <laughs> Maybe this year will be the year. <laughs> this year will be the year that I open the box. <laughs> Oh, so terrible. Mm. I think I'm going to make the habitation throw with it because um, mm. it would be nice to have just like a nice good sized blanket, decent sized blanket to have like on my chair or, you know, mm -hmm. just out in the pictures I've seen of that, um, the color set that Legacy Fiber Arts did last year with their advent calendars. Or it's I mean, it's gorgeous. It's mm. like a kind of a cool like rainbowy kind of thing. So be fun cool I, I may have also scored a um wine advent calendar from costco maybe <laughs> that is too funny what could possibly go wrong if i am knitting and drinking wine i'm really uh, nothing it'll be fine it'll be fine don't don't ask the purple sweater <laughs> the purple sweater is done it's done it's done wow i know i wore it on tuesday they do and I suppose I could have I could put it on again today That's, yeah I know Ann and I were we're going to podcast on Tuesday but my dogs decided they both needed to go to the vet on Tuesday 
All right. So we're back. We're 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 here on Thursday, which is like our normal. Both my dogs are fine. They're just now have medications for one has an eye infection and one has a UTI. So you know. Yep. No, it was it was I mean they <laughs> fine i i literally could have worn the sweater again today um but i was like no i've got so many nice sweaters to wear and it's gotten cold like i'm gonna wear a different one i love the one that you're wearing that's Thank so pretty you. it's so warm it's it's amazing just the difference between a fingering weight and a dk weight mm -hmm. um just in sort of like the heft and just the the warmth that's perfect for a day like today yeah so yeah yeah. I know we're supposed to have a few chilly days in a row. I know. It's all right. Sweater weather. Mm -hmm. Sweater weather and almost, hand knit sock weather. Almost November. I know. I know. Look, this is Michelle's um, fallen leaves oh, skein. That's fun. Isn't that gorgeous? That's really pretty. She does such a good job. I know. This is her DK. Um, the DK base. So this is my yarn that I did the brim in. Um, she might have just done a Mandalorian themed one. <laughs> and I might have. Is that the, the extra scheme that's arriving with the order that yes. we've got coming? <laughs> yeah, that's what that's about. <laughs> I know after, after the fact, I emailed her and I was like, you know, if you just want to throw that in with a, a store order, like to save on shipping, like it's totally fine with me. Like I don't need it like right now. <laughs> As funny. I keep putting in the comments when I, if I order yarn from people I know, no rush on this. Not like I'm going to run out of yarn anytime soon. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, but... Yeah, I guess Baby Yoda is supposed to be like the costume of the year this year. That doesn't surprise me. I mean, they hit a home run, I think, with that character. Um, it's, anyway, yes, it is endeared to Star Wars fans everywhere. Yeah. Well, maybe not everywhere, but most where. <laughs> most where. <laughs> most where. <laughs> uh, yep. Yep, yep. So, did you do any... Um, do any shopping over the Rhinebeck weekend? Did you check out anybody's stores or I, pop in for any of the festivities? I didn't. I didn't. It was um, it was busy at the store that weekend. And mm -hmm. then Sunday, I was, what was I doing on Sunday? I don't know. I don't, I didn't get a chance to, I wanted to, and there was actually a couple classes I had thought about taking initially and I didn't, but. Yeah, I, I did. I, I mean, I, I'll just talk about them now and. Okay. We, you since we're us. in outtakes and our outtakes are going to be like 40 minutes and our actual mm -hmm. podcast is going to be like 12. <laughs> it seems to bother nobody. <laughs> you know. Um, so I took a Tunisian crochet class. That's right. Um, and I was actually pretty cool. It's, it is definitely like a hybrid. It feels that way. Yeah. Like it feels like a cross between, um, knitting and crocheting and, you know, the fabric also I'm looking, I brought my sample with me. So this is my three color sample thing here nice um it's uh this pattern is supposed to be like a scarf and i'm as you can see i'm already maybe you can't see it i think it's easier to see on this side i already like lost a stitch somewhere because i'm clearly wider at the bottom <laughs> uh so i don't really know what happened there um so i'm gonna rip this one out and i think i'm going to um cast I'm gonna make it wider I don't really like the narrowness and I may turn it into like an infinity yeah. scarf when it's done but what's really cool with this particular pattern with the three colors is that it's really easy to see what which like little loop things you're supposed to be picking up because it's a different color than what you're working with and mm -hmm. you don't get confused about which color so 
when you work back this way, you pick up this color and work back and then you pick up the other color that's there and then work back. And so it's not as difficult as like trying to keep track of where am I? And it just, it creates this really interesting fabric. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure I'm sold on this, these three colors together though. I don't know how that's picking up on the screen, but. You've got what, like a green, a gray and. A, a green, uh, like a, yep, a gray. And then this one, that's the barnyard. Oh yeah, okay. That's, that's funny, like, that, that one wasn't like reading at all. Like I can see the green and the gray, but. Yeah, it's not, you might be able to, it might read better on that side. Hmm. Maybe, kind yeah, of. Yeah, a little bit. You a little bit, yeah. So. I, th you know, I think this is, um, again, I think this is one of these techniques where it just, it helps get you used to the motions of the crochet. So it's yeah. a little bit, you get into, get into that rhythm because it is a rhythm and muscle memory yeah. type situation. Um, so that was cool. And then the other class I took was a continental knitting oh, yeah. class. Yep. Yeah. Uh, which again, it's just, it requires practice and time. And I can see why it's faster. Like the motions are so much more economical yeah. um, in than what I do, which is I'm a thrower. Um, yeah. So there's, you know, multiple hand motions and steps involved in making one stitch, whereas uh, so I, I will try a project. I thought that it might be this one, but I need to power through some of these. Um, right yeah, now. I a lot of times will recommend to people just working on something, especially in the beginning where you have a whole lot of knit because knit's fun. It's easy and continental and um, you get you get used to it and then incorporate something where you've at, got some purling to throw in because purling is is a little bit different you know um mm -hmm. in in continental and um you know yeah. it's it it can be a little bit more challenging just especially it's more about the tensioning and keeping everything tensioned the way you need to well and you have to you have to be careful because it's really easy to twist your stitches mm -hmm. um if you wrap the yarn the wrong way or you loop it through the wrong way and more so on the pearl side yeah. Um, which is fine if you unwrap them or untwist them on the next row, yeah. which you can do. You just have to pay more attention yeah. um, to what you're, what you're doing. And I also think uh, the continental knitting, I, for me, I think is good, would be good practice. Again, it's developing that comfort level for holding the yarn yeah. in the opposite hand, which is part of my struggle when I'm crocheting is that it's awkward and uncomfortable for me. And so, you know, doing something that's already, my brain has wrapped its head around and just getting used to having tensioning the yarn in the other hand, I think will help with some of the crochet issues that I run into. Yeah. Yeah. I find that um, people that have crocheted before that I've taught to continental knit, they are much more comfortable with it because if they're right-handed, they typically will hold, they'll have their yarn in their left hand. So um, they pick up, they pick up the motion of picking really quickly, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I loved it and I thought it was great and I could totally see like, oh my gosh, if I got this down with muscle memory, like how fast I could knit, like yeah. it would be crazy fast. Yeah. Um, you know, like I could do like four stitches in the amount of time, like it takes me to do <laughs> one because there's just so many steps with throwing. Yeah. So, but maybe a winter project for me is to just, but it's like anything I need to just designate a project. I need to work on it for 15 minutes a day and yeah. then set it aside and then, you know, work on the other stuff that I'm working on. Yeah. Um, so. It's so true because, you know, I, I can continental, but I just, because I learned throwing and that's kind of my, it's just my natural, I sit down and that's what I do. Mm -hmm. um, but I have had projects where I, I will do completely in continental just to, to work on that muscle memory. And it is, it's a practice and I have to, 
just yeah. do it, you know? Yep, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I bought a little bit of yarn over my back weekend. Did you? Yeah, I didn't go crazy. Um, but uh, some uh, Jacob yarn from CC. Nice. Uh, and a uh, Feederbrook farm, one of their, so they do the mill ends yeah. and they're, uh, they're giant. They're like 500 and some yards of wow. the sort of like marled changing colors um, in their DK, their entropy DK uh, yarn. And it's pretty, it's pretty reasonable for you know yeah. what it is and how many yardages it is and so I was thinking that I might turn those so I got the gray uh Jacob's yarn from CC and I may turn it into a spark the spark cardigan oh isn't that lovely so pretty that's a really lovely cardigan I I have that I bought the pattern when it first came out yep and um I haven't made it yet but I really want to make that that's lovely yeah and so I'm right now I'm trying to figure out if I think that Jacob wool would do good because it'll the shawl collar will stand up. It's a little bit heftier. Those farm yarns tend to be, and I don't think it'll be too scratchy. I probably would wear a cardigan over a long sleeve shirt anyway. Yeah. So I'm gonna talk about some farm yarns that's standing up a little bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the um I had one other yarn purchase over the weekend. And so I've been eyeballing, I've been wanting to make the weekender for a really long time, mm -hmm. but just never have settled on the yarn to use. And of course I was on Instagram, like one is over a festival weekend, um, trying not to get sucked into all the things. And uh, Loop Yarn mm. posted um, a sample of the weekender that had been done in their yang yang colorways. Oh. So there, if you're not familiar with loop yarns, yang yang colorways, they are, they're marled yarns. So they're two color marled yarns that are matching opposites, right? So, oh. so like if it's a, a blue, it'll be like a dark blue and a light blue and one skein with the dark blue as the dominant. And then it's matching yang is the light blue as the dominant with the dark blue yeah. running through it. So they're complete complementary matches of each other. Yep. Um, and they have really clever names like far and wide or, you know, <laughs> this and that. Um, so funny. she's been very clever with her with her names. And they did a weekender in the yang yang where one color is the dominant body but in this section up here on the shoulder that has patterning is in the other color oh, that's cool. and the cuff is in the other color and the bottom ribbing is in the other color oh, that's cool. so it's just these little pops of complementary like completely yeah. yeah completely complementary colors huh. um so I saw that and I went, oh my God, I have to have, because <laughs> it was so gorgeous. And I did, I did the thing where I had to order the actual color that the sample was in, because it was so beautiful. Um, you know, I looked through all of her other colors and I was like, nope, that's the one I like the best. Um, so it's you just have to, yeah, because you know, it just hits you. And it, it, just... it did. Um, it was a gray, uh, dark gray and red marl. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, that'll be pretty. So the body of the sweater is going to be the uh, dark gray dominant oh, with the nice. little pops of red. Oh, that'll be really pretty. Yeah. So I think that one's next on the mm -hmm. cast on list as soon as I clear some of this holiday knitting out of the way. Um, I don't have too much of it. I'm trying to be kind of toned tone down a little bit here Yeah. with it. But um, so I'm super excited to do that one. That one's. <laughs> nice that'll yeah. be fun that'll be I can't wait to see it mm -hmm. I know now I want to go cast it on <laughs> holiday knitting holiday knitting <laughs> yeah right. I need a new sweater <laughs> <laughs> it's my holiday sweater okay it is it's red and gray it's holiday um stop it Kelly <laughs> <laughs> I go home and I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna do the Sharon Dunstead. I'm casting this project on. 
it's for my holiday sweater, okay? It's, it's a worst weight sweater. How long is it going to take? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the entire month of November. <laughs> you know. But, yeah. So I'm excited about that one. Um, yep. Yep, yep. Fun. I've been eyeballing her yarn for a while. The, the Yang Yang. Um, I know uh, Mina Phillips done at least one, if not two, pat shawl patterns um, with that yarn and it's just it's so it's such a unique idea and it's just it's her cool. colors are really yeah. cute really cool yeah she does really cool stuff anyway yeah yep yep um well should we get this podcast on the road here yeah I actually have stuff to talk about today <laughs> okay cool I love it I think I'm gonna I don't leave... have anything finished but you know that's all right I think I'm gonna leave my glasses on again because screen time thing so but I'll do the like woo woo so I can find my spot now you just did it once so you'll be like oh is that <laughs> when I'm editing so all right are we ready mm -hmm.